Right, I'm hoping to keep this video a little bit shorter than the never-ending mitosis one, unless Dr. Savile's managed to really cleverly split it up um, into, into other sections. So, key things about meiosis. First of all, the chromosomes behave in exactly the same way in the phases. They do what you expect them to do from your study of mitosis. In prophase, the chromosomes are going to condense. In metaphase, they're going to attach to the equator. In anaphase, they're pulled to the poles. In telophase, they arrive at the poles. And that's followed by cytokinesis, when the cytoplasm divides. Our key events in meiosis. First of all, we've got two consecutive divisions without an interphase in between them. So instead of going interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, back to interphase, and prophase, metaphase, you know, let's divide again. This is going to go interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis possibly, back to prophase. So there's no gap between it, and then it's going to go metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis again. The other key event in um, meiosis is that at the beginning, in that very beginning of prophase, we're going to form bivalence out of our homologous pairs. So they're actually going to pair up and act um, like the chromosomes do in metaphase of um, mitosis. They're going to line up at the spindle together and then that first division is going to separate out the pairs of chromosomes. Now that's really important. That's the thing that is going to make those cells have half the number of chromosomes. And you'll often hear meiosis referred to as a reduction division because we're reducing the number of chromosomes by half. Also in prophase, a significant event, crossing over. So we're actually going to swap some of the information, some of that genetic information, between the homologous pairs, bearing in mind that you get one of your homologues of each pair from your mom, one from your dad. They have different genes, so we're now sort of muddling up, shuffling, if you like, your mom and your dad's genes on each homologous uh, chromosome, so that you'll get a mixture of maternal and paternal genes. We then got uh, in metaphase, and it doesn't matter which metaphase it is, we've got this event called random assortment. So now that all of our um, chromatids are different, we can then randomly assort them onto the chromosome. And this is sort of shuffling up the chromosomes. So remember that, particularly in humans, really complicated, we've got 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, it would be no use if all your dads, you know, all your paternal chromosomes, the ones you'd inherited from your dad went into one and all your mums went into another gamete. Uh, so you're going to shuffle those chromosomes up through this process of random assortment. Uh, big significance for your study of inheritance actually. It's, it's the reason that when we're looking at two different genes you get a number of different sorts of gametes that you're dealing with. So significance then of meiosis. Why do we bother with meiosis? Uh, first of all you need to know that we're making one cell into four genetically different cells. And again, just like with mitosis, you need to say that word genetically. They're genetically different. They have different alleles in them. The um, significance of being genetically different, of course, is that you then get unique offspring. So you are a completely genetically unique individual because uh, you've been made from genetically different cells, not only they're from two different individuals, but each one not exactly the same as your brother or sister because, well, let's face it, you've been made from a different gamete. Um, so that, and that each one of the, your mum's gametes is different, each one of your dad's gametes is different. Um, the other thing is that they're haploid. So these are four genetically different cells are all haploid. So that means that the chromosomes are not in pairs. So in a diploid cell, your body cells, for example, your chromosomes are in pairs. Your gametes are haploid. That means that they have to get together with another gamete to make a diploid number. So this keeps the chromosome number always the same 
from generation to generation. It means that you have 46 chromosomes, but so did your mom and your dad and your grandparents and their parents and their parents and their parents, backwards, backwards, backwards. And it means that your children will have 46 chromosomes. So we're restoring that diploid number, maintaining the chromosome number. This is uh, you know, pretty much the same as in mitosis, you're maintaining it between cell generations, this one be between sexual reproduction generation, uh, generations. So I don't particularly want to spend my next half hour drawing cells. I think we'll just do a couple of the phases. We'll do the first, first division perhaps. Um, and then sort of shortcut some second divisions. So, we call our divisions meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is the first, that makes sense. And the first event, we're going to start with prophase. So in interphase, oh no, maybe we're not, we'll start with interphase. Don't want to confuse you. So, interphase, remember what's going on. Chromatin is unwound, it's in a nucleus. So here, um, again, if you've done sexual reproduction in humans or plants, you'll know that we're dealing with megaspores or um, germinal epithelium cells. And your chromosomes, if we could see them, which we can't, would be in pairs, but they appear as single structures. And then we get the usual stuff going on in interphase, the most key of which is DNA replication. So we've got ATP synthesis and protein synthesis, and if you learnt that in mitosis, it will pretty much see you through meiosis as well. So, we, But we get DNA replication. So, at prophase 1, when our chromosomes appear, they appear as those double structures, just the same. Two sister chromatids joined by a centromere, our nuclear membrane is going to be disappearing. But the difference is, and this is the key difference, one of our key events, is that our chromosomes, there's my purple one, my teal coloured one come very close together. And they form what's called a bivalent. So this is the homologous pairs lined up together. And what happens then is this process of crossing over. So, crossing over kind of works like this. Your chromosomes are very sort of tightly wound together. They break at places called chiasma. You're okay using chiasmata, that means two of them or more. So it could happen at multiple places and and I'm just going to do it in one place just for ease and I'm going to spread my chromosomes out although this all happens while they're all knotted up together this results in some swapping so now we've swapped this section of maternal DNA for this section of paternal DNA DNA so now each one of these chromatids is genetically unique. It has a mix, you know, it has different alleles on it. So that's prophase one with crossing over, making, giving us a nice source of variation there. Those chromosomes will then head off just in the usual way. and they will line up at the middle. We've got that spindle formation. But again, they're going to move as bivalents. I'm only going to draw two spindles in this time, I need two. Um, I'm not going to put the crossing over bit in because my life's too short. 
um, you're, you're going to have to imagine the crossing over on this. But now, you see, we've got two chromosomes. We've got each pair is lined up on a spindle. If you were to draw that in an exam, I would definitely, definitely, on either side of the equator, show, show them lined up on either side of the equator like that. Now, obviously we could line them up like that, or, and that's a big or, we could line them up like that. In this one, these two are going to move together one way in anaphase, and in this one, these two are going to move together that way. In this one, this big purple one is going to head off with the little green one, and this green one is going to head off with the little purple one. That's anaphase. That's the idea of random assortment. So these alleles, remember, are different from these alleles. These alleles are different from these alleles. So it really does matter if, you know, it goes in a, with a different chromosome. That's the uh, idea of random assortment. Now, I don't want to draw anaphase because, you know, you can imagine them being pulled apart and they get to telophase and then they do cytokinesis and it's all lovely. And at the end of cytokinesis, so going into um, meiosis 2, What we will have is we'll have two cells. And again, if we could see our cells, we could see our chromosomes in our cells, which we can't because they've been coiled at telophase. It doesn't do interphase, it's going to coil up again. So let's pretend we're in prophase 2 already. We're going to have separated out the pairs. So now these chromosomes are not in pairs. This one has not got a, a pair to it. This one hasn't got a pair to it. So these are unpaired chromosomes. And this means our cell is haploid. Now all that remains is to separate out the chromatids. So meiosis 2 is all about separating out the chromatids. So again, these are going to line up on the spindle. Remember that our chromosomes have crossed over way, way back in prophase 1. So this one might have some maternal genes on it, be different from this one. So again, you get a bit of random assortment going on. Uh, crossing over, although it's a rare event, does happen in can happen in more than one place, and it will happen in more than one chromosome. So it does matter which way they line up. So you get random assortment again. You line them up on the spindle at the equator, joined by the centromere, and split out, pull apart those chromatids. So that at the end, when we've done cytokinesis, I'll put my crossing over back in now on that big chromosome. We've got half of what we started with. Put my crossing back over back in on this one. And they are all different. So remember back at the beginning we had two pairs of chromosomes. 
uh, in each cell and we've now only got one of each sort of chromosome. So these are our haploid chromosomes, not in pairs, gametes, all genetically different. So that's quite significant. So you do need to be able to compare them. Obviously in mitosis, it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with a haploid cell or a diploid cell, the chromosome number is going to be the same at the end as it is at the beginning. In meiosis, it's going to be halved. In mitosis, you get genetically identical cells. In meiosis, you get genetically different ones. In uh, meiosis, you're separating out in division one, the bivalence. We get bivalent formation, no bivalence in mitosis. Crossing over in meiosis, no crossing over in mitosis. So you should be able to compare those two sorts of cell division. And if you think back to that uh, paper from 2015, um, these cells won't go on to divide. Go, their, their job is to fuse with another cell. So they don't lead to an uncontrolled cell division. Okay, I think that wraps it up. Hurrah.